There's cat hair on my mic. <laughs> I'm just trying to like, be really quiet and take it off. But she's just like this. Yeah. <laughs> Babu. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Dog Ear Discourse. This is our first episode where we talk about the books we're reading and where we left off. So I'm joined with Kelly. Hello. Danny. Hello. And Juan. Yo, yo. And we're just going to do a quick introduction to who we are and why we're talking to you. So I'm Chris and I love books. I got into science fiction when I was really young and I've loved reading just about anything I can get my hands on. Uh, recently, I've fallen out of reading too much and I wanted to read more. So that's why I'm here. Kelly? I have also been reading since the day I learned what words were. I spent probably most of my childhood in the library that was walking distance to my house. I could probably still tell you where any book you wanted to find is in that library. I like to read mostly fiction, lots of true crime, science fiction, biographies, a little bit of everything, though. I was really excited to be able to get the chance to do deeper dives into the books that I was reading as I generally tend to read with attention to detail and trying to guess what's coming next and trying to find those little hidden Easter eggs anyways. And so it's kind of exciting that now we get a chance to talk about them and figure out where everybody else is at too. Danny, what do you think? I'm excited to be in this podcast. I was pretty into reading growing up, like middle school, obviously when Twilight came out and that was all the rage. It's like reading lots of vampire stuff. Then I kind of like went by the wayside and I started reading again. It was like 2018. So I started reading young adult. I started getting into the booktube community and I was getting like super hyped and they're making everything sound so great. And I was like, okay, yeah, these sound awesome. And then I was reading a lot. Like the first year I started reading, I read 30 books and that was a lot for me. Like there was many years that I was not reading like anything. And then I got like obsessive with it. Like I joined all these clubs online and I was reading six books a month. That year I ended up reading 103 books. I can't really stand young adult anymore. So I kind of falling out of manga and anime because you know I'm just kind of growing past it I think so I was trying to find what I liked now as an adult person and so far I feel like adult fantasy and science fiction holds my attention and it's something that I just keep reading and I like the idea of the big series where once you get to know the characters then you can continue the journey with them instead of having to relearn a whole new cast of people like your next book 300 pages later so yeah, I'm excited to get more into reading fantasy. There's a huge genre. There's a ton of books to read out there. But yeah, I'm, I'm kind of open-minded with the, the true crime, horror, and also maybe some like, you know, comic books or something. Okay. So. And what? It has, and I'm ashamed to admit, been a while since I read a book cover to cover that was not technical in some way. So I know how to read. But, <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> but I feel like I'm also learning how to read again, trying to get into like the comprehension of how do you actually read a story? Because I'm, I think I'm exactly opposite of what Kelly was saying. I'm reading a book and I take it like all I know is what's going on in front of me. I don't even try to guess what happens next. I, I'll figure it out in the next page. So it's been interesting, definitely getting back into reading and trying to figure out like i said i know i know what words are <laughs> just how how do you process it and it's been interesting yeah it's definitely different the way you read because like if you're reading a technical manual or i was reading contracts for about three years and that's when i really lost interest in reading for fun because yep. you're just reading 180 page contract in two hours it definitely changes the way you read. And it is this paragraph or this sentence. And what does that mean yeah. versus how does this fit into the bigger picture? There yeah. is no bigger picture. It is literally just what you read at that moment. Yeah. So. And so it is like really retraining yourself how to read. Danny, Off. that's a pretty hot take that you're outgrowing anime. Uh -oh. I know. I'm, I was like, who am I? <laughs> oh, my God. This is terrifying. Ooh, I'm still in the anime community. Just in the background, I'm like a wallflower. And I'm going to have to say I kind of disagree with the young adult stuff. Uh, <laughs> it's totally fine. It's I, fine. <laughs> I like reading books that are 
you know, in depth and long and have lots of layers, but it's kind of nice every once in a while to just sit down and you know what you're getting kind of like action movies, you know, where you're just, yep, that's lots of guns and shooting (laughs) action and blood. That's, that's fine. There's not a lot of thinking going on. And I'm not here to say that all young adult is just kind of like nothing to think about because there are some really good stories out there that Mm -hmm. are more advanced than people give them credit for. But I think that we can all agree that most of the time, you're not reading young adult it's as not an adult. Life changing. Yeah, you're not you're not reading it for like literary like how it used to be. Prowls. Yeah. <laughs> it used to be life changing. Yeah. Back when you hadn't watched movies. <laughs> <laughs> back when you haven't lived a lot of life. Right. right. So, so how did you guys meet? Oh. Well, we went to high school together. We did. We, oh, you want to tell the DECA trip? Yeah, we were actually in a marketing group, like an after school business. Yeah, it was DECA. And they had these competitions where you would go and basically simulate a business environment. So whatever the scenario was, you'd had to go and either sell or present some kind of product to a judge. That's really cool. A marketing group. I did not have marketing groups in my high school. He actually got like, what was it, third place? First, but you know, first? whatever. Oh, okay, well, <laughs> hey, yeah, got first place. He was in that school newspaper. Like, this guy can yeah, sell. Oh, look at this guy. And I, then we com- shouldn't even be in the same room as this guy. Uh, yeah, I'm reliving my glory days. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll dust off my trophy and your little I, I Letterman know. jacket of selling. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if anyone's interested in what I placed, but I placed 14th. Perfect. Hey, I like that's it. the top 15. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> match made in heaven. <laughs> Well, no, that was uh, the first go around. The second go around, we placed 11th because we didn't even open the packet that had all the instructions. <laughs> didn't even bother to look at it. We got How? We got a little. You, well, they give you time to sit down. Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> but we got first, so oh, obviously. You're like, we don't need this. Uh, <laughs> too good for instructions. <laughs> yeah, time to wing it. Yeah. Yeah, that's going from no confidence to full confidence. And you still did better than we did when we were trying. <laughs> oh. Anyways, it's, it's okay. How about you guys? How did you guys meet? We met swing dancing. Yeah. I got really into swing dancing. I had moved up here. I, well, we're in Washington State right now. I had moved up to Washington from California um, and was kind of looking for a group to be in. Just... I didn't know anybody. I came up for work. And so I got into swing dancing, West Coast swing, and fell in love with it. I was finding classes every day of the week. No matter oh. how far oh. away from my house it was, I was going every single day. Like, I don't think I slept the first two years that I lived here, seriously. She didn't. Oh, God. <laughs> so at one of my favorite classes that I would go to, it was right near his house, and he had actually mm-hmm. started going there, too. Yeah, I started going to swing dancing a few years back, and then, you know, I, I was actually started off in just general ballroom dancing and fell in love with West Coast Swing. Uh, one day, Kelly walked in the door. Uh, fans I, was, blowing. Fans blowing, like her hair's whoosh, back. Slow-mo. And, yeah, exactly. Perfect, you know. <laughs> and, and, yeah, so we started talking. We decided to have a good drink. It was great because we, we started off the conversation with... Like I was just talking about what I'd recently done and I watched the movie Ender's Game. And I was like, why did you see the movie? Yeah. (laughs) I don't know if you guys have seen or read Ender's Game. I haven't seen Ender's Game and I won't. But Ender's Game is very much... In the head. In the main character's head. I'm at a loss for words at even why you would even try to make a movie of this. It's just ridiculous. Right. And so our first big conversation was around books. Did you like the movie, Chris? Like, was it a good... But did you think it was a good movie? No, it was absolutely not oh. a good movie. <laughs> it was not a good rendition of the book at all. And that's what I, that's what I was kind of bringing up was like, eh, it's not a great movie. You should probably avoid it. But it still like stemmed the conversation. I hadn't met very many people who had read Ender's Game. Like it's a very popular book, but not a lot of girls like it. It's a more of a boys coming of age story. Oh, okay. And so we just kind of started talking. And then a few months later, we started dating. And then, uh, and here we are, and here we are today. <laughs> so, no, we've been married for three years. So, wow, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yay, married. And let's talk about how we all met, mm. right? So, um, like all my favorite 
meetings of friends and all my favorite friends completely random yeah yeah <laughs> it was st patrick's uh, day st. Patrick's we went day. out for st patrick's day um and in this town that we live in is pretty small there at the time there was one irish pub in town and as far as i understand it's been there kind of forever it is no longer there <laughs> but it was jam-packed because it was the only irish pub in town also one of the only places open. Also one of the only places that was Irish the entire year round because that is the day of the year that everybody's Irish all of a sudden. Yeah. I, I, I'm sorry. I don't need a shamrock margarita. <laughs> so we got a table right when we got there and we had gotten there kind of right before the rush came in. By the time you guys arrived, it was probably about an hour later mm. and there were already like on the edge of brawls happening. Like, there were people everywhere. There were no tables open. It's like standing room only, but like it was an awkward thing. Like it was Should not really. Should we explain what standing room only is? That may be a relic of the past. That's oh. true. Go ahead. Explain standing room only. So back before a global pandemic, depending on when you're listening to this, the world may well be over. But <laughs> you could actually cram as many people as you could into a place until the fire department came and said, hey, this is a fire hazard. <laughs> Until it became a fire hazard, you were yeah. fine. <laughs> Until there was tramplings. <laughs> uh, it was close to that at this place. Yeah, it was It was shoulder to shoulder. Which leads us to us <laughs> not being able to find a place to even stand and drink our drink. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so we had like a barrel seat or something like that. And we see Danny and Juan walk in. And it was our table or a table with a cute little old couple. And we were like... Kind of waved them over and we're like, hey, come sit with us. And then they looked over and the old couple also did the same thing to them. And I was like, they are not about to go and sit with the old couple instead of us. Time to make a choice. Yeah, yeah we're and just so looking we over at, at both we, tables. Like, oh. We <laughs> dared them with our eyes to try to like, go to the other table. Kelly and this other woman, they're all like frantically waving at us to come sit with them. And we're just like, oh, God. Time to make a choice. Yeah, so we just kind of pretended that we didn't see the... Very nice elderly group that had, or couple that had uh, waved us over. We, we made our way outside yeah. and joined Kelly and Chris. And then I remember that I was just like super hyper to meet somebody our own age because we just, we didn't really go out bar hopping very often. And so we just started blabbing. We had one interest that was the same. And then we had another one. And then we had another one. We could not To the point where at first talking. it was exciting. And then it was like, like wait a minute. Are you got clones to yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah, it was, it was kind of creepy how much we had in common. And it was to the point where I could not believe that we hadn't crossed paths beforehand. Because we had, we both liked reading books. We were both really interested in comic books. And dancing, actually. Too. Dancing yeah, and cosplay dancing. and all yeah, video games, drinking, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, important. <laughs> all the important stuff. How yeah. have we not run into each other before? <laughs> and I have actually lived there. My first my first place was like a block from where they are. You know, that's like my old stomping ground. So it was just kind of funny that we didn't run into each other before. But I'm actually really happy that it happened on St. Patrick's Day because now every single year we have a friendship anniversary where we go to that bar, even though it's a different owners and Changed place names now. a few times yeah yeah but we still try to go there and just kind of you know reminisce about the beginnings of this and then yeah we have a built-in double date outside yeah. of this podcast yeah. <laughs> yeah and so we, we we're now getting together to talk about books we're here to read and we stop specifically in the middle of the book and so that way we can all be on the same page when we talk right mm -hmm. so and that way if you our listeners want to read along with us we're not leaving you in the dust. Read with us. We want you to engage and let us know what your theories are. You're going to hear what we think, but we want to hear what you think, too. And if you've already read the books, you can laugh at us. It's great. Yeah. So, <laughs> like, you're so wrong. You're, it's funny. It's I like, will ha, say ha, this. Ha. I love I love trying to guess the endings, and I am rarely correct. So <laughs> it's going to be a good time. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it's easy to guess what's going to happen. Not all the time, Speak though. Speak for yourself, but. <laughs> <laughs> Says the technical reader. Yeah. Each month we have one book to read within that month, and then we're going to break it, the book up in half. So the first podcast episode, we're going to be talking about the first half of the book, and then we're going to have another podcast episode after we all finish the book, 
and see how wrong we are. <laughs> and that way we'll post the reading schedule online on our website. So please we're follow. also going to be having a drink, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. We're going to have a themed drink. Each section will get its own beverage. So we'll start out with a beverage that kind of reflects either a theme or an idea or an event from the first half of the book, the second half of the book. Maybe the drink will be like an encompassingment of the whole book as a whole or just something from that half of the book. We're not 100% clear on that yet, but once we know, you'll know. We have our book schedule, not our drinking schedule. Oh, yeah. yeah no, we can't are... make the drinks until yeah. we've read the book. We don't know what's going to happen yet. Mm -hmm. So we specifically chose every book on our list because none of us have read it yet. We wanted everybody to be on the same page, on the same amount of surprise and intrigue and horror and excitement as everyone else. And so that way... Nobody's got like the key to what's going to happen at the end. <laughs> and we can't be like, ha ha ha, you fool. So all the books that we have picked for this year are standalones. They are not part yeah. of a series. They also are in the fantasy genre. Some of them are young adult. Some of them are adult. It's something that we all love. So it's a good way to jump in, right? Yeah. All yeah. of us are going to like. And we can branch into sci-fi later and horror. Yeah, that would be interesting. To yeah. Romance. Are you serious? Would you read a romance book? Uh, yeah, there's actually one on my shelf right oh, now. Oh, spicy. The Bromance Book Club is on my <laughs> shelf. Right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. so Danny and I will read one book. You boys read the Bromance Book Club. We'll hear what you have to I, say. I read yeah. the back of that, and it's about a, like a baseball league and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, it's it'll be interesting. I have no idea why Nothing I picked that up. Nothing says love I, like baseball. Half of, <laughs> mo most of my books I just get because I'm wandering around like a bookstore, and I just get lost, and then I find a book, and I'm like, I'm going to buy this now. So there's a lot of <laughs> Is books. that your nervous tick is buying a <laughs> random book? <laughs> buy just like, I don't know where I oh, am. I need to find a book. So I, I grab a book, and I just try and make my way to the exit. <laughs> Do you need help finding you. anything? <laughs> uh, no, I found it right here. <laughs> Just grab right, off the it. shelf. Be like, what am I going to read next? Romance Book Club. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, my God. Romantic Grand Slam. We have a couple books that I am really excited about for this year, mainly because I've seen the movies. The Princess Bride. Mm -hmm. Everyone has seen The Princess Bride and knows quotes from the movie, and it's just hilarious. So that is one of our books that we're going to be reading this year. Ooh, really I saw a never-ending story on the list, yeah? That's another one. Right. Both did, of which yeah. I learned literally yesterday were books. Yeah. <laughs> I know. As we were making this list, I was like, that's a book? Oh, add it to the list. Absolutely. I have to know. The Last Unicorn. I watched The Last Unicorn cartoon, anime, whatever it is, like, yeah. as a kid. But I didn't see any other version. Of I had that. like an old school VHS that had the last unicorn and flight of dragons on one oh, on one VHS. Wow. Yeah, it was. Those are old. Spoiled. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I guess that is another one that used to be a movie. So exciting stuff coming up. As far as for this month, mm -hmm. our book of choice was Paranese. Paranese by Susanna Clark. Yeah, our next episode, that this we're going to dive like, right into the first half of this book. It's really exciting. Susanna Clark is a really good author. Have you read anything else from her? I think it was uh, the Jonathan Strange book. I picked up Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell because I literally knew somebody named Jonathan Strange when it came that's, out. That's cool. I was like, I have to have this book. And honestly, time got away from me, so I haven't actually read it. How funny would it be if it was his biography? No. I'd be in it, so that would be great. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so we're actually going to be reading through the first three sections of the book. The book's divided up into multiple sections. Yeah, reading up to part four. Thank you for joining us today. Our reading schedule will be posted on our website and Goodreads account. Tune in next time to hear our thoughts for the first half of Piranesi by Susanna Clark.